In this lesson, we're going to go over angle relationships uh, that result from parallel lines being cut by a transversal. So first off, we'll start with that line L and line M are parallel. That's usually denoted with a symbol like this on the two lines. They're parallel, that means that they never intersect. They remain the same distance apart from each other. This line that cuts through them is known as the transversal. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, there are a lot of angle relationships that result. First, if we ignore this bottom line and just focus on this area up here, we see that we have vertical lines. So this angle is the same measure as this angle, and these two angles are the same measure of these two angles, and also these are supplementary, these are supplementary, these two angles are supplementary, and of course these two angles are supplementary. But now let's focus on the other angles. So we're going to take into consideration this parallel line down here. Well, this set that we just looked at up here is exactly the same as this set down here. So let's give these numbers. We'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this is exactly the same as this. So these angles up here as a group correspond to these down here. So that's what we'll look at first, corresponding angles. Okay, and these are congruent. So they're the same exact measure. So angle 1 is in the top left of these four, and angle 5 is in the top left. So these correspond to each other. Therefore, we could say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. So, top left and top left. Likewise, angle 2 is in the top right. Out of these four down here, angle 6 is in the top right. So these two are congruent. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. Now let's look at angle 3. Angle 3 here is in the bottom left of these four, and angle seven is in the bottom left. So these are congruent. These correspond to each other. So we have angle three is congruent to angle seven. And finally, angle four is in the bottom right of these four, and angle eight's in the bottom four. So these correspond to each other. These are congruent. Angle 4 is congruent to angle 8. So corresponding angles are angles that match up based on the diagram. So top left, top left, top right, top right, and so on. All right, now let's go over some more uh, terminology. The angles that are in between these two lines are known as interior angles. The angles on the outside are known as exterior angles. So interior between the two parallel lines, exterior on the outside. Then if we go from one side of the transversal to the other, that's alternate. So on alternate sides of the transversal. And if they're on the same side as the transversal, so on the left side or on the right side, we're going to call those 
same side. So let's go over alternate, interior, angles. So alternate means different sides of the transversal, interior means in between the parallel lines. So alternate interior angles would be 3 and 6. These are both in between the parallel lines and are on opposite sides of the transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. There's another pair of alternate interior angles, angle 5 and angle 4. So angle 5 is congruent to angle 4. Interior and alternate. Now let's look at alternate exterior angles. These are also congruent. So exterior means we're going to look at 1 and 2 on the outside and 7 and 8. And alternate means opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate exterior would be 1 and 8. These are alternate exterior angles. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 8. Then also 2 and 7. Those are alternate exterior angles. And they also are congruent. Now let's take a look at some same side angles. So we'll do same side interior first. So interior are 3, 4, 5, and 6. Same side. Well, 3 and 5 are on the same side. And 4 and 6 are on the same side. Same side interior angles are supplementary. So that means angle 3 plus angle 5 is 180 and angle 4 plus angle 6 will equal 180 as well. And likewise same side exterior angles are also supplementary. So we have angle 1 and angle 7. These are exterior. So exterior would be 1, 2, 7, and 8. Same side would be 1 and 7. So angle 1 plus angle 7 is 180. And 2 and 8 are exterior on the same side of the transversal. So angle 2 plus angle 8 would add up to 180 as well. So let's just take a look at this diagram as a whole. You know angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent because they're vertical. Angle 1 is congruent to 5 because it's corresponding and these are vertical. So if you think about it, kind of just jumping back and forth or zigzagging through the diagram. So going here, here, then here. Those are all congruent. And likewise, we have 2 is congruent to 3. 3 is congruent to 6. And 6 is congruent to 7. So again, we're just zigzagging or jumping across in here. So going from here to here, to here, to here. So we could quickly label which angles are congruent to each other. And uh, any angles that are not congruent, so for example, 1 and 6 are not congruent, they have to be supplementary. So they're either congruent or supplementary. So 1 plus 6 would equal 180. We can see 1 and 5 are the same, 1 and 8 are the same, 1 and 4 are the same. 1 and 2 is 180, 1 plus 3 is 180, 1 plus 6 is 180, and 1 plus 7 is 180. So they're either congruent or supplementary.